Hi, I'm Chris Lotz with the Palots Real Estate Group. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Beyond the Keys, a Palots podcast. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Stay updated on all of our uh, new content. So, um, we are talking would you rather's, mm-hmm. home editions. Kind of a little, kind of little fun, fun stuff. stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um, so the first one is home theater or swimming pool. Hmm. Swimming pool for me. Um, you can go to the movies. And I think you get a better return on your investment swimming pool. Nowadays, um, there's a high demand for pools. The cost of putting in a pool is quite high, opposed to buying it resale. Um, and there's a lot of um, family functions and family things people are wanting to do. They're not going to want to sit in a home theater. Yeah. They're going to play outside. Yeah, buyer desirability. Yep. Um, we, uh, we're uh, currently on a contract on a house that does have a pool, yes. and the pool guy came to inspect it the other day. He yeah. said that to build that pool right now, $125,000. I I agree. So the you know the 550 minus 125K, we're calling it a... Um, you know, 475, that math is not right. 425 house. Yeah. I mean, it kind of makes sense. But uh, but crazy to think about that. $125,000. But two, that value, it's different for, for all people. The the way that I answer it, well, for me, it's swimming pool as well because I'm probably, I don't need the home theater. Um, but somebody asked me recently, pool or finish the lower level. Finish the lower level, you might have more of a tangible ROI mm-hmm. attached to that. Yeah. But I said, do what brings you more joy. Mm-hmm. You're going to be there for 10 years. Like, you, would you rather have the pool or the finished lower level? Well, do you need the space? Um, can you do some of the work yourself? Mm-hmm. That kind of thing. Yeah. So a little sweat equity into it. Next one is a little off of kind of more luxuries in the home, but more settings. Mountain Vista or Skyline Views? Well, um, Mountain Vista is is gorgeous and it's very attractive to me, but seems very rural and remote. And I like action. So I thought you were going to say Mountain Vistas. I, I'm telling you that I like Mountain Vistas and I like all that, but I also love the skyline views because I like where the action is. Your husband would say Mountain Vistas. Well, that's true. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have two track. homes? Yeah, you're going to have two homes? Yeah. Um, so downtown Brighton or downtown Chicago then? Okay, downtown Brighton. So, so when you ta- when we're talking about <laughs> skyline views, we might be talking about like small city action. Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily New York, New York. No, it's exciting, but I think it would get old. So, New York, New York, or Aspen, Colorado. Aspen, Colorado. Really? So Vista Views. Well, okay, so I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, I'd probably go with uh, skyline views. Like I, I, I lived in D.C., lived in Chicago. Um, for me, I'd probably, I, I truly do like to be close to the action, so I'd probably be downtown. Well, and think about yeah. it, you can always do the Vista Views on vacation. Yeah, so. yeah. But, I mean, you know, I guess it, uh, there's can be, there's pros and cons of both, but, you know, like, for me, it's convenience mm-hmm. um, as much as the views are awesome. Um, but who knows? Maybe we should go experience both of those things there on the go. inside. Uh, next one, exposed brick or elaborate moldings. Oh, I like exposed brick. Me too. I like the feel, yeah. the rustic, the, um, I don't need all that elaborate molding. I always wanted a uh, um, Chicago loft. Mm-hmm. So expo- industrial, exposed brick, yeah, high yeah. ceilings, exposed ductwork. Um, to me, going to these houses with uh, elaborate moldings, you know, crown molding in certain homes goes a long way, but I don't need it. No. I'm not, not, no. not too worried about it. Um, and it's tough in our market, not that like it's, we need to even talk about ROI because it is just buyer desirability. People right. are looking for that elaborate moldings. People are looking for that exposed brick, but it's too, it's markets, demographic, but for, for us, it's it's those things. Um, landscaped lawns or outdoor living rooms? You don't have a big yard right now. I don't, I don't like that big yard. It's a lot, I mean, it's, it looks really cool, but I do like the outdoor living room. I would. And you that. kind of have that, yeah. more or less. Yeah. Um, but I agree. I, I I respect 
the lawns. Mm -hmm. I respect the landscaping. We grew up with a lot of landscape and a lot of yard. Mm -hmm. um, 20 yards of mulch, I mean, that gets old fast. You know, I just want to enjoy those things. And that's where I think you get, you, if, you, if you have the uh, uh, outdoor living room, you're enjoying that space. You're not necessarily working in that space. Uh, you can always outsource it, but... Well, you simplify, too, the outdoor living space and just have, you know, your, um, your easy-to-maintain, um, you know, uh, landscape beds, you know, hostas lilies, and then do some annuals in there, so... Yeah, but, but I also think that 90% of the time, I'm enjoying that living room more than I'm enjoying that lawn. Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. at least for, like, you know, pleasure. Uh -huh. um, Walk-in closet or extra bathroom. This one's kind of hard because I kind of like the walk-in closet. We don't have a walk-in closet right now. Um, and we do have two bathrooms, but, you know, an extra bathroom like that or a walk-in closet like that, like, that's pretty tough. Well, I would like a walk-in closet, an <laughs> extra bathroom, and it depends. Um, I don't need a his and her bathroom. I just need, I would like um, a bathroom together you know the master bath whatever that is and then have a half bath in the house i think that would be mm -hmm. satisfactory of course how many people live in the house yeah but I actually um, i think your answer would be both at this current point in time <laughs> <laughs> um well um I'm, I'm hoping i get both well think about that for your new construction building here soon you know in the uh -huh. near future uh -huh. and somebody asked me recently because she's doing new construction and i didn't even think to say his and her bathrooms master bathrooms uh um my grandma has that Yes. And that's awesome. The shower is shared, but she has her side and then there's his side, separate vanities, walk-in closets, toilets. She's got a tub he doesn't, I believe. Yeah. yeah. Um, but that's pretty awesome. I didn't even think about that. It's pretty cool, but... Is you it know, in 22 years, have I seen it? I've seen it maybe twice, and one of them is my mother-in-law's yeah. face. So where was the other one? No, <laughs> I don't know. I think it was in Pine Creek or something. Yeah, um, a walk-in closet would be nice too. Well, you technically have a walk-in closet. No, I don't. <laughs> yeah. it's, a, it's a it's a it's a guest bedroom, walk-in closet, laundry room. Okay. Yeah. Yes, in my fort. Um, my temporary can, fort. Contemporary for it, or your te oh, your temporary for it. Yeah. I thought you were calling it the contemporary no, for it. No. Uh, next one is contemporary versus country kitchen. What have you always gone for? What was what was Lauderdale Court? I mean, it, it was really just a, a traditional, you know, a traditional kitchen. Um, you know, um, maple cabinets, corn countertops, and pretty traditional. It wasn't um, classified as, as a either country of those or things. contemporary. Yeah. yeah. So but I. But if you had to know, choose one of those things, if I had to choose one of these, see, I'm sort of a lake liver, you know, lake and lodgy look. I tend to would go to the country, but I wouldn't go in heavy in all those directions. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. I and and. Not um, decorations. Yeah. We get into some of these homes, well, one, that have huge contemporary vibes. And I think people are kind of, people are looking for white shaker cabinets. Mm -hmm. um, but I also think that contemporary is not always an aesthetic people are looking for. People enjoy some of these country kitchens every once in a while or like the, uh, the rustic look. But again, I think those are very bold in both directions. If I'm building something, one, I think the white shaker cabinets are kind of, are going to be relevant for a good amount of time. But... Mm -hmm. You know, maple cabinets or hardwood cabinets, I think are gonna be coming back at one point in time. And in two, it's just classic, it's clean, yep. and it's not offensive. Rustic or country could be offensive. And someone said that the other day, that paint is not offensive. And I think that's the threshold is, is that bathroom offensive? Is that kitchen offensive? If it's offensive, you're probably changing those things. A contemporary or a country kitchen, if you're on the opposite side of those things, one of the others probably offensive. Well, and you think about it though, is that if somebody goes in and sees that, they're gonna be thinking, because the buyer pool for that gets limited. Yeah. If you've got a contemporary or country kitchen, you know, you gotta like that stuff. And if not, you're going in there, cha-ching, 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 I gotta change this, mm -hmm. so. Uh, colors that pop or neutrals that blend? I like neutrals that blend. Yeah. I used to maybe do the color um, that pops years ago, but I'm pretty much less is more. We should, um, I saw this recently, it was it was colors that yield more uh, return on investment. Mm -hmm. I thought it was interesting. It was like a certain gray that statistically 
it gets more money um, uh, for home values versus certain blues, reds, pinks, or whatever that might sure, be. Sure. So, you know, I guess there's something to be said, and that's the ROI in us, I guess, talking, but for me, same thing in my house, it is uh, a tone of gray. Um, but we like neutrals that blend and keep it very continuous, concise, nothing offensive, nothing bold. Um, um, but yeah, I'm right there with you. Yeah. Wrap around veranda or rooftop deck. Jeez. This is very similar to mountain vistas and <laughs> skylines. So she might say skyline or rooftop and, and then, then switch, it, switch, switch it. it. I don't know. That wraparound um, porch looks um, pretty comfy and cozy to me. For me, it's rooftop deck. Mm -hmm. That's pretty awesome right there. That is pretty cool. It's very custom views too. Mm -hmm. You know, your view is not the same as your neighbor's or a different, a different uh, you know, rooftop. Mm -hmm. But if you have a private rooftop deck, it's massive. Nice. Nice. I wish I had that in Chicago. Would you rather get an apartment condo or get a big old house? And I think we're talking about, you know, two, three, be two, three bed, two, three bath in our community. And put this to our community. Yeah. Or get a big old house, you know, like 5,000 plus square feet. I don't want a big old house. I'm, less is more in my season of my life. You know, back when I was raising kids, that might be another thing. But still, no, I don't like a big old house. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. Like we don't like, you know, we we would love to sell and buy a big old house all day long, but the way that I look, at least the value of my life, we don't have kids, so buy a big old house if you got a big old family. Yeah. Buy a little old condo if you got just a little old family. Yeah. Kind of like my thought. Yeah. Would you rather buy a fully renovated home or buy a fixer upper? Well, I've never bought a fully renovated home, so um, I don't know what that looks like. So I have much more fun though buying a fixer upper, which I've always done. We're on our third lake house because limited property there. So you've got to work with the house and fix it up. And actually how many years ago I got into uh, real estate and we would buy fixer uppers, sweat equity, um, you know, do a lot of the work and outsource, you know, the contractors to do the big stuff. But That's crazy to think about because I never thought about it until you just said it. You have never bought a move-in ready house? No. Mm -mm. Cornwall Lane. What was your first house? Cornwall Lane. Cornwall Lane. And it needed work? Uh, what did it need? Ooh. Lipstick or did it need no, like no, 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 big, no, big no. stuff? No, no, no. It was really quite bad. Um, it was a beautiful house on the Huron River on the chain. Um, and it was... Uh, when did you buy it? Hmm? When did you buy it? Shoot, 1986. Wow. Um, we blew the roof off um, to add living space. I mean, we just completely renovated it, but it was great because we did a lot of sweat equity, got a great return on our investment, and was able to buy the next house, which was more of our family home, mm -hmm. on Lakefront. So, Which was Lauderdale Court. Lauderdale Court, which we remodeled uh, twice um, to make it our own. Mm -hmm. And then the third one here is on Strawberry Lake, my fort. You have never bought a fixer up, or you have never bought a fully renovated home. Yeah, but that's they, crazy. Yeah, but it, and when I show them, <laughs> I don't have a huge desire to do that because I do like to make things my own. Yeah. Well, if any uh, of my buyers are watching, I love to say this line: I love Grandma's house. So I guess I'm tending towards to buy a fixer upper as well. Yeah. But I look at it as if you get it at a deal with good value potentially then we can definitely get that quick appreciation so sweat equity you know build up over the two years sell it step up to the next thing or buy grandma's house again so i like grandma's house i like location square footage and bones yep. how it's made i mean you can kind of do a lot of these other things what i love a fully renovated house for sure but i don't necessarily think that at this point in my life that's what i'm tending towards or i'm gravitating towards um, I gravitate towards fixer uppers. Yep. And I think there's uh, there's oppor there's more opportunities for fixer uppers than there are with fully renovated houses. Right. In terms of return on your investment and making money, is a fully renovated house going to hold its value? For sure. You know, and capital expenditures are taken care of. So if you build a new construction or buy a new construction, it could take 20, 25 years depending on materials for those things to start to, to break down. And really historically, 
people buy new constructions in the late 90s and they're selling these things in 2020. So yeah. before everything starts kicking the can, they're, uh, they're, they're getting out, out of there. there so. yeah. um, would you rather, very similar uh, to what we've been talking about, and you might say suburbs as well, but would you rather live in a city or live in the suburbs? I'm city, so. I'm suburbs. But too, like. But I can drive to the city. But in our definition of city and suburbs is very fluid versus this is probably a complete difference yeah. of city and suburbs. So, yeah. so you're more or less in the city because who lives in the city in Livingston County? You know, like Brighton City or Howell City, right. very small population. Right. But then those suburbs are still very similar in terms of per capita. You know, people are still driving to things and amenities where the city, you're probably walking to coffee shops or driving or walking to coffee, uh, coffee shops and grocery shops. Suburbs, we're all driving out here. Well, it's 20 minutes to get anywhere, yeah. so. Would you ra rather have a huge lawn or have a huge basement? Well, and, and maybe like think about acreage, you know, like would you rather have like an extra 10 acres or would you rather have like that finished lower level with, you know, 0.35 or 0.25? I don't know. I guess it just depends on the season of the life you're in. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. um, I like a big lawn if I had kids running around being crazy. Um, and then winter. I'd love a huge base. There you go. <laughs> okay, we can pass on that one. Yeah, I get. I guess it uh, depends for me is because I would love the ten acres, but too, you know, I think about ten acres. I think about um, maintenance, upkeep. You know, for me, it's simplicity. It's being able to spend money and time in places that I actually want to spend money and time. And if that is a huge lawn or property, who's gonna do mow it? do it? Yeah. What were you saying? Who's gonna mow it? Who's gonna mow it? There you yeah. Go. That, that's what I'm thinking about. But but too, if if that's if that's uh, uh, dad says it quite a bit. You know, I'm, he's creating the vac he's creating the lifestyle to where he doesn't need a vacation. Mm -hmm. And I think again, if you're buying the ten acres with the huge lawn or the huge basement, mm -hmm. and you're not necessarily having to have that escape, like that's why I don't want to necessarily spend that money. Is this fits our needs? It's great for us. It has the amenities we're looking for, the location we desire, the bones that are going to be long lasting. But uh, we can spend money and time in other aspects of our life. Right. But if you want to have the huge lawn and the huge property and mow that property, go for it. Go for it. Uh, live in a cul-de-sac or live along a main street. You'd probably say cul-de-sac. Cul how do you know? Because you grew, uh, you raised us on a cul-de-sac. It is. I'm in a cul-de-sac. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I probably. I'm. I'm looking at this property in downtown Brighton. Um, I don't know what they're doing with it, but I would love to own the storefronts because I. You can rent those storefronts all day long. They're going up for lease, uh, priced right, selling or leasing. But then there's living space above the old hardware store. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't necessarily know if that's possible but um i think that would be fun have an apartment upstairs sure. and the two storefronts out out, out front and, mm -hmm. and walk to brighton coffee shop yeah. and walk to brighton bar and grill that'd be fun kind of cool convenience yeah i mean but the cul-de-sac have... seasons of life yeah you know for the cul-de-sac it's all i mean shoot three kids and a dog cul-de-sac all day long yeah peace of mind yep would you rather have super high ceilings or lots of natural light? That's a tough one because I like both a lot. Um, nowadays, eight foot doors, mm -hmm. 10 foot ceilings, it's a massive difference to eight foot ceilings and six foot doors or whatever it is, you know, seven, seven foot doors. Um, what are your thoughts? But I think that for me, natural light is on the top three. It's like location, Architectural style, ranch versus colonial, and it's natural light for me. I think it's natural light for me, too. I like natural light. I do like the high ceilings and all that other stuff, but I think, too, all that noise and it's cool up there. I like cozier. Mm. And um, If I had to choose, I'm probably choosing natural light as well because I think that, like, let's just put it into perspective. Dark and high ceilings and shorter ceilings and, and very, very bright. Yeah. For me, it's a no-brainer. Yeah. But those touches in new construction nowadays, tall ceilings, eight foot doors. It's very desirable and very attractive. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Would you rather live close to work or live near loved ones? Loved ones. Yeah. You're not gonna work the rest of your life. No. Would you rather hire people to help with interior work or do a bunch of DIY projects? Well, I am not that handy. So it depends on what that <laughs> DIY is. I like to hire people. And it's, so what and it's DIY, not my husband. What DIY projects are you doing? I think that list might be short. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I could plant some hostas. Okay. Um, I don't know if that's, I, uh, that's a true DIY, but she's painting in this picture. Can you paint? Do you paint her? When was the last time you painted? 
I don't know, maybe 10 years ago, ten years or seven ago. years ago. I don't she know. She might be out here people out to do your work. I think then, I'm, yeah. I'm hiring people out to do the work. I've, I've done a few, uh, we painted a few rooms. You know, I think uh, Hannah would also say that she's a big DIYer. And then when we started DIYing, she's like, eh, I don't know about this. She can if she wants yeah. to, and she has to. Yeah. She's a great DIYer. But we've done painted, uh, we've done painting in some of our rentals. We've done, um, we did not set the countertops. Professional did that. We did get help from uh, uh, to set our cabinets. Appliances were installed. We did do all of our floors. Okay. We did set a kitchen, uh, a bathroom cabinet. We did tile the the shower. So we could do some things. But to me, it's what what's the word I'm looking for? Opportunity cost. Mm -hmm. You know, if I can, if you can pay do somebody, it, you can do it. Yes. Yeah. If you're if you're saving thousands of dollars to do it, but it all you're doing it right, like I'm probably t tend to steer away from. Things that are going to cause more harm than good, plumbing's, electrical, you know, those can be pretty serious. So, so call a professional. Um, have a bunch of neighbors or live somewhere more isolated? I don't know what you'd say to this because you currently have that, but I think you would also say that. Well, I live somewhere more isolated. I like privacy and isolation. I do. Um, um, I do like people around, but again, it's the time of life. Um, I've always, we've always lived more isolated. Um, like Where? Well, when I isolated, like not in a subdivision setting with a lot of kids and people outdoors. You know, uh, when you were growing up, I there weren't a lot of kids there, so I went to Aunt Sue's um, subdivision. Okay, so yeah. we isolated from other kids, uh. but everywhere you've lived, your neighbors were 10 feet away. I guess I never spoke to them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I like isolation. So there so there were less less kids in certain communities and I'm assuming well, but Cornwall Lane we had the Evers and then Lauderdale Court we had the Smiths and we had the Coxes. Yeah, and... but that's not just like a regular subdivision neighborhood. It's it's, it's not a sub versus uh, where we grew up. Yeah. 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 A, a traditional subdivision. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that was that's the visual as we're looking at it, that's the visual. Yeah. Uh, I like isolation. Yeah. I <laughs> like isolation. I uh, have a playroom or a game room. Kind of the same thing. I think so. In complete honesty. Yeah. But I guess times of life and to, I don't know if I'm going into a game room as an adult, but to have a to have a space for a playroom for kids Gotta that's not it. your actual living space or their bedrooms. Yeah. Pretty awesome. Yeah. Uh, good one. Um, hardwood floors or carpet? I think you probably say hardwood floors. I think right now hardwood floors, yeah. Carpet's nice, but mm -hmm. for me... For consistency, I like the I like uniform, solid floors. I do like carpet in the bedrooms. I mm. just do. Mm. You could use your rug. Yeah, I could, but I like carpet in the bedroom. <laughs> Would you rather live somewhere family friendly or live somewhere hip? Family friendly. Hip. <laughs> hip. Um, we'll run through some of these other ones uh, pretty quickly. We're kind of getting close on time. Yeah. Uh, Would you rather have a kitchen island or a walk-in pantry? That's kitchen. a tough one because both are awesome. Kitchen island. So I like the gathering around. So zero room. pantry. You have you have a little cabinet pantry. Yeah. See, it's tough. I know. I'll put the uh, stuff in the garage. See, the problem is, is we grew up with a <laughs> put the stuff in the garage. <laughs> the problem is, is we had a walk-in. Well, yeah, walk-in pantry. I was going to talk about the kitchen island though. We had like a fifteen by fifteen by fifteen triangle. Yeah. Massive. Yeah. And then we had a, a walk-in closet that was probably like a. Uh, so the uh, bathroom. Ten, it was probably a 10. There was shelves, so we didn't feel the space of the 10, but it was probably like a an 8 by 5. Mm -hmm. And it was a triangle as well, so you kind of walked in and it, and it branched out, so you had shelves on all three walls. Mm -hmm. But yeah, we <laughs> had a kitchen island and a walk-in pantry. All The whole family could probably lay on the kitchen island and no one yeah. would touch. Yeah. Uh, would you rather have an eat-in dining room or a breakfast nook? Again, we had both. So. <laughs> um, I would ha I'd rather have um, a breakfast nook. I don't need an eat-in dining room. Yeah. A lot of people prioritize that dining room stuff these days, though. Where's the dining room table going to go? You know, it's how often are you using that? For, um, for me, it's if, if I have a place to sit and, and bar stools at the kitchen island, yeah. that's where I'm probably eating 90% of my meals. Yeah. The dining room table area is nice yeah. as a luxury, but for me, it's not necessarily necessary. In a bedroom, would you rather have a fireplace or a balcony? Mm, balcony. It doesn't matter. Balcony. Well, a balcony, yeah, not a fireplace. I don't need a fireplace. In your kids' bedrooms, would you rather have an absolutely epic play space or a room for extra bunk beds? Epic play space. Yeah, me too. Uh, would you rather have a wine cellar or a walk-in closet? That's really? a tough one. Really? Yeah, talking about... Really? <laughs> um, I would rather have a walk-in closet. 
Yeah. Mm -hmm. Those, uh, have you ever seen those um, vertical walk-in well, wine cellars into the ground? Mm -hmm. Have you seen those? Yeah. Those are kind of cool. Yeah. Um, would you rather have a gorgeous landscaped yard or a beautiful pool? We've talked about this before. You know, I'm, I'm probably saying pool because it's what brings me more joy, but yeah, cool. same thing. Cool. Um, cool. Uh, so a little fun. Um, would you rather? Any other would you rather you're thinking about? No, that was fun though. Yeah, that was um, good. It makes you think about um, what do you need? Priorities. Yeah. You know, when you're looking at homes, and I think that you know people have a list of their priorities as buyers and sellers, well, buyers specifically, and it's trying to figure out you know what you need in a home, mm -hmm. not what you want in a home. Well, I guess there's a give and take of need and want. It is. But what you want in a home and what you need in a home, and trying to prioritize. Um, getting most of that list accomplished mm -hmm. and not necessarily sacrificing, but that list is not going to be perfect. We're not going to be able to hit that. You got to be flexible. Yeah. You know, you got to work with it. And, and, you know, again, working with floor plans, um, you know, you can always change the interior of a home for a desired feature that you want. You can't change the neighborhood, the size of the lot, the location, the schools, all that other stuff. Yeah, cool. Mm -hmm. Another episode in the books. Um, Chris Lotz with the Pat Lotz Real Estate Group. Uh, you know, again, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Beyond the Keys, a Pat Lotz podcast. Uh, live local, buy local, use local, and as always, there's lots to love in Livingston County. Thanks for watching. Make sure to use those like, comment, and share buttons below, and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Instagram, and subscribe to our YouTube channel at Pat Lotz Real Estate for more helpful home buying and selling tips. Want a free comparable market analysis? Scan that QR code on your screen or visit our website at www.patlots.com and fill out the request form. There's lots to love in Livingston County.